in this video we will see how to add csv data how to add the rainfall grids to a shape file so first we will add the shape file and then we will uh, just uh, see uh, that symbology we have made it hollow now we are going to add our csv data so for that we will go to add layer and delimited text layer and then I will just search for my uh, rainfall data where I have saved so that we can add it as a CSV data. Uh, please note that we have to add it as a point coordinate. It should have a projection system. We can see the data here. Add it. So we can see that the grids have been added as points. These are X and Y locations. And then we can save it by exporting. We can look at the attribute table. These are the lat longs. Total 10 points are falling into this sub basin. So we need to suppose export uh, from this sub basin that is shown on the screen. We need to export the grids. So how do we do that? So first we need to select that area where we want to see the grids. So I am exporting that file. Simple procedure. We can export by right clicking export and then save it as a history shape file. And then click OK. It will be exported like this. But now let's say we want to export the grids in this region out of the total grids. Um, here I'm talking about rainfall grids. So first I will uh, check the projections. I will save this grids also because I just exported it as imported it as CSV. Now I need to uh, just save it as a uh, shape file. Then we will uh, search for reprojection because we have to make sure that both the files, both the vector files, the point file and the po polygon file are in the same projection. So we will reproject the layer and then we will uh, check the properties where the projection system has changed or not. Now we can clip, we will clip the uh, points and the polygons. So we have the points and the, uh, the, and the polygon both in the same coordinate system. Now we can just clip it and then this is the result you can see we have exported the grids for this part of the entire basin. So this is how we can do for a large area also when we have a lot of grid points falling we can do this. And then uh, we can just simply visualize. Now I will just remove all these layers. Select all and then just control D or you can right click and remove. And now we can see that here in this particular sub basin suppose i want to select some part and uh, i can see in the attribute table that i have a lot of attributes so suppose i want to add some more attributes into this particular file so to do that what we need to do is first we need to look that what particular data i am going to add so for that i will create a new excel file so new excel file is created and now I am looking for joining some more attributes into the existing shape file. So first I have to give some common fields. So in this excel file my first column or one of my columns should be one common field. Now to see the common field we will go to the attribute table which one column which of the columns you want to make it as common. Here I want to make it as sub basin as the common. So sub basin I can add. And then I can give 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because to do these sub basins, I want to add more data such as rainfall, population, I can give livestock, I can give ET value or so on depending on what data you have. Here we have some arbitrary data generated. Remember that to join fields, one field should be common. So here I will give exactly same. It is case sensitive. So sub basin spelling, everything I have checked. So now it's it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and here I am filling the arbitrary values. So first we saw that how we can import the CSV file and add it as a point shape file in case of our rainfall gate stations. And now we are seeing that if we want to add some more data to our existing shape file, how we can do that. So for that reason, I am just adding some of the arbitrary values here of the population. Okay, this data is just... Uh, a sample data after filling all these values what I'm going to do is I'll just join I'll join the fields and it will be joined 
this is very much useful when uh, we want to uh, like we have some information in the form of shape file and we have a lot of information in the excel file so it is very much useful in that case because what will happen my attribute table will change and now uh, i can do the symbology or i can do the analysis based on these new attributes because they will be added so this is important now i'm just saving it as a csv file so save as and save as comma delimited text now it is a simple process in the uh, qgis add the layer add it as a delimited text layer then browse to your file where you have saved browse to your csv file which you want to add or join so this one is my file now here we need not give any geometry it is just we are building the attribute table no need of giving projection systems no need of giving us x y we are not loading it as a shape file now we can see that it is added we have checked its attribute table and our sub is an attribute table go to properties and that go to joins click on plus symbol and then here you can see your file is updated now you can select the join field as a common field and the target field also as a common field now you can select which all fields you want to reflect get reflected in the attribute table apply okay now it should be reflected in the attribute table so you can just scroll it and see three new fields have been added so this is what is the purpose now you can provide symbology so based on these values you can provide symbology for example i want to see how this uh, study area will look if i just give rainfall as my attribute so i will just go to categorized and i will give the symbology based on rainfall so classify and since it is hollow that's why it is looking uh, like this so i will just first see how the hollow symbology looks i will just apply okay and this is how you can see differentiation based on the rainfall now suppose if you want to make it solid then that also we can make it so go to single color first and then you just double click on this single line so here you can see just you need to double click and then you can instead of outline you can give it as a fill so here you can see the stroke uh, stroke color you can give it as here you can give it as black suppose and stroke width you can give it as 0 so what you will observe here again i am giving the symbology based on this you can observe that now there is a stroke width of some some particular width has been applied and it's filled now if you want to remove that stroke width also you just need to double click on that simple fill and you can keep the stroke width as 0 so and that is one way of applying the symbology you can just play around with it so here what i am like observing so like that you can remove the stroke width also here it got removed only for one because i have just selected it for one you can do for entire like i have shown it you can just put it as zero and then okay you don't need any line or any outline so you can just put it okay apply and then okay so this is how you will see that your map is now at uh, having the symbology based on the rainfall simply you can give labels go to single label select by what column you want to label it by precipitation or rainfall apply okay now you can see the rainfall values displayed on that map based on our what we have provided in the excel table so this is how we can do the join fields and we can uh, load the imd grids so i hope this was useful so thank you